Do you want to speak to your prospect in a way that they will never forget and unlock near supernatural power when it comes down to building rapport? Then a few minutes of creative thinking is all you're going to need. I'm going to show you what those few minutes look like today. I am John Benson. I'm here to help make you unignorable. And this is Sales Copy Secrets. And welcome to The Secret of Badass Rapport. This is all about self-identifying avatars. And what that means is creating almost supernatural-like rapport. I mean, like, you know, the woo-woo chemistry you feel when you meet that certain someone. They go, ooh, I was meant to be with that person. Most of the time, it's just because they're hot. But this is the real McCoy. This is the stuff that makes people flock to your emails and open them when the moment they get the email. And you know the people I'm talking about because you do this to certain people yourself. There are certain people that you follow and the moment they send you an email, the moment they make a post, you drop what you're doing and you go check it out. That person is me. I know. Thank you. But I want to turn that person into you. I want your audience to do that to you. And one of the ways that you get them to do that is through the creation of what I call a self-identifying avatar. So I want you to keep watching all the way to the end of the video because I have a box of kittens I'm holding for ransom. And if you do not, I will know it and I will force them to watch Miley Cyrus videos for hours on end. I mean, the sheer psychological, if not physical torment that this will unleash on those poor, innocent kittens. It's gonna be on your head, man. Or just watch it to the end because you wanna learn a lot and help the algorithm. E either way, they both work. And as always, if I earn your like, if I earn your fandom, if I earn something else, I don't know, if it's laws, it's good, pulverize that like button, like, share, subscribe, comment below, ring the bell for notifications, and let's dive into the training. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you like being called by your first name? Most people do, especially if you haven't met somebody in a while and they remember your first name. And what if you haven't seen somebody like in two or three or five years and they come up to you and they go, Bob, and your name isn't Bob? Probably not a good feeling, right? But if your name is Bob, you feel like, wow, this per I can't believe this person remembers me. I have no idea who this person is, but they remembered me and it's a gift. It's a skill that people can really hone. Now, I don't have that skill. I meet so many people all the time and my brain is pretty jam packed with other stuff, I think. That's the excuse I give myself. It's probably laziness. Don't tell me, I don't wanna know. Now, let me ask you another question. Do you like it when your beloved, someone that you love calls you an endearing nickname. Most people who are somewhat romantic or they have a really cool nickname that only their beloved calls them, they really like that. Only the beloved gets to call them that. Maybe you've heard people say, only my best friends call me this name. That's a kind of feeling, that's kind of vibe I'm talking about here. So last question, what if someone that you admired came up to you and go, there's the copy master, there's the online selling genius, makes you feel pretty good, doesn't it? Well, that is why self-identifying avatars are so awesome. They make your prospect feel damn good about themselves or the extreme. They pull your prospect into their current pain in a validating way. So let's define self-identifying avatar, shall we? A self-identifying avatar is a repositioning technique used to elicit a strong bond between the marketer and their prospects. It's sort of a title, a short phrase describing every avatar you speak to with a simple word or phrase they either desire to become or describes their current state. So I know that definition was long and a little bit lengthy, but when I show you what self-identifying avatars are, you're gonna totally get it. And let me tell you, when you apply it, it takes a little bit of creativity, but your marketing will take a quantum leap for the efforts. So let me give you the simplest example by using the first phrase of a sales letter. You know when you open a page and you see dear friend? That's gotta be the lamest, dumbest, most unauthentic way to start a letter. I've done it before because I couldn't think of a self-identifying avatar or didn't know how to at the time. A lot of people do this, dear friend. Oh my gosh, that's the worst thing you get. You can get, except for the the personalized emails that come across that says, "Dear John Benson" in all caps, you know, and they put my middle name in there, "Dear John Dana Benson." <laughs> it's like, yeah, it just I feel so endeared from that, don't you? And yes, my middle name is Dana. Back when it wasn't cool, so you know not to start a letter with "dear friend" unless you absolutely have to. But what do you start it with? Well, let's do a little bit of creative brainstorming, shall we? I want you to begin with a label. 
that would immediately elicit a feeling of rapport, a sense of bonding, camaraderie, understanding, and even hope. In fact, I often use self-identifying avatar phrases that do not describe my audience at all, but merely describe what or who they want to become. I'm gonna give you examples of all of these, but let's start with my ex example from the CBD letter that I just wrote and showed you over the last couple of videos, which are down below. If you haven't seen them, you should watch them. After this one, of course, and consider what I did to open that letter. Dear fellow sufferer. Now those are two words that perfectly identify my avatar. And that's most certainly how they identify themselves. They are suffering. Now that's not something they want to be, obviously. That's not positive. But the word fellow changes everything. It says, I'm in this with you. I feel what you feel, or I have felt what you are feeling now. I understand what it's like to suffer. It screams, I can relate to you. So like I said, this is not something they want to be, but rather something they know that they currently are. In psychology, this is referred to as validation, and it's a potent way to connect to your prospect. So when you speak to what your prospect desires to become, that's known as optimization. So two different frames for these self-identifying avatars. Validation, in other words, I feel your pain, I feel your pain, I feel your pain, and optimization, what they want to see themselves as or what they who or what they want to become. And the key to this game is knowing when to use which, all right? So let's look at some examples of self-identifying avatars that use validation and optimization. I'll break them down for you and you can decide which one you want to create for your ideal prospect. Cool? Awesome. Dear Patriot, <laughs> one of my favorites for anything dealing with anything pro-America, pro-Constitution, uh, anything dealing with a conservative audience, calling them a patriot, even if it's not a political message, this does not have to be a political message. This could be a message just to a certain demographic. And I could flip that. I could flip that to the other side of the political spectrum and say, to the resistance. Now think about what both of these are doing. Patriot, it says everything. It speaks volumes to that person. So because this is the way they currently see themselves, this is validation, not optimization. Although you can make the argument for both being somewhat optimizing because I could take someone that is just proud of their country and call them a patriot, that's kind of a step up, or someone that is just against the, the system that, and they're now they're part of the resistance, that's another step, I guess you could say. So these can be paired together a little bit, but primarily this is validation. Let's look at the next one, my fellow copywriter. Okay, that didn't take any copywriting genius to write, but if I wrote a letter to you, a sales letter to you, and I said, my fellow copywriter, or my fellow copy lover. There you go. It's describing who you are. It's somewhat validating, but more than that, it's optimizing because you may not see yourself as a copywriter. So especially if I said, dear copy badass, and I've written, by the way, I use that exact opening avatar, self-identifying avatar for one of my own offers, and I'll show it to you right here. And by the way, I'd love for you to go check out johnbenson.com. We just released the new website last week. Still got a few typos here and there, but man, we spent a lot of money and time on it. Would love to have your feedback on that. I slip into my text accent sometime, but notice the self-identifying avatar I used on the Offer X page. Dear marketing badass. Okay, well, what do they think of themselves? I think of themselves as marketing badasses or they want to be. So I'm either validating or optimizing depending on who's hitting the site. If it's a newbie hitting the site, it's, it's, it's an optimization for sure because they're not that yet. But they would love to be a part of that club. They would love to identify with that marketing badass, wouldn't they? That being called a marketing badass, of course they would. Now, by the way, Ryan Dice, who I'm fortunate to call a friend, he's the CEO of Digital Marketer and the founder of Traffic and Conversions. Back before he changed the name of his company to from Idea Incubator to Digital Marketer, I asked him, well, hey, Ryan, why the change? You've been known for this as this name for so long. And he said, it's simple. It's a self-identifying avatar. I don't think he called it that, but it's a, it's a brand that would be self-identifying. They would see Digital Marketer and here, oh, that's what I am. I am a digital marketer, that's fantastic. So that is nothing more than a validating self-identifying avatar, but they used it as a URL. So this goes beyond just the intros to sales letters as I hope you now see. The next one is such a great combination of the two, my heartbroken hero. Now that is just dripping with rapport, with personality, with de desire to connect deeper than the superficial heartbroken hero. So who are they writing to? Well, they're writing to someone that just lost their girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, whatever, through divorce or through separation or God forbid, through death. And the author, she described this person as a heartbroken hero. 
So you're having to live through the agony of heartbreak. And she's calling this person a hero for getting to the other side of it. And she did it with three words, my heartbroken hero. She said, my, like she says, you are my hero and you're heartbroken. Validation, optimization, both at the same time. And by the way, I was that girl <laughs> author of that letter, just saying, don't read too much into that. Copycats. That's another great one for a copywriter. Okay, copycats. So it's just a play on terms, just a, a pun, a rather silly pun, but copycats, kind of cool. To the Dow Jones disruptors. Oh, people in day trading and people who are beating the Dow Jones would love to think of themselves as Dow Jones disruptors. <laughs> but people who are not yet Dow Jones disruptors, people who are just getting into it, would love to identify as that. So again, optimization, validation. My good friend Scott Devine over at Scott's Bass Lessons calls his list avatars low enders. Why? Because we be bass players, man. <laughs> And yes, I will occasionally cut to me playing the bass because it's just a lot of fun. But my good buddy Scott knows that we bass players often call ourselves low enders. And there you go. What's up, low enders? And then finally, a very funny self-identifying avatar for a coffee company. Wake up, coffee freak. Okay, we all use coffee or a lot of us use coffee to wake up in the morning. Coffee freak is one word. So the avatar becomes one word rather than two. That's another great tip, by the way, for your self-identifying avatars combine two words that normally are separated to get one word that's a new avatar. And obviously the play on terms, wake up, coffee freak, pay attention to what I'm sending you. That is an awesome one. Okay, now you know the secret of the self-identifying avatar and the secret to building more rapport, an almost instant connection, and a tribe-like feeling for the people that are reading your offers. And you know how to either validate or optimize or combine these two elements to speak directly to your potential buyers. And as a copywriter or a marketer, this can help you create a, like a little mini social club around your offer, around you. You can become sort of a cult of personality using nothing more than self-identifying avatars. In fact, I have a self-identifying avatar for you. It will be released when I'm ready. But when I'm ready, you're gonna be called that and you're going to like it. And now you know how to avoid those lame, trite, dear friend kind of letters that no one buys into, no one believes, and does nothing to move the needle, does nothing to move persuasion. Notice how we're moving the needle of persuasion by literally using just a few choice words at the start of a freaking sales letter. That's how powerful and potent sales copy really is. Okay, in my next video, I'm gonna dive into one thing that beginner copywriters almost always get wrong. And I see some intermediate level guys do this too, and we have to stop it. I'm gonna tell you what it is in the next video, but until then, look below and like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell for notifications, and be sure to tell everyone that you know about John Benson, because I am here to help make you unignorable.